let's take a look at eBay's smallest LED streetlight. They describe this thing as a streetlight. Technically speaking, yes, it could mount in a pole and it could light a street at a sort of relatively low level, but uh, I'm not sure I'd describe it as a streetlight. However, in the listing, it was described as super bright LED streetlight wall security floodlight outdoor path road lamp. I won't even try and pronounce the name of the seller. £5.39. Um, I think I paid a small postage charge, but I noticed there's no postage charge now. Hmm, cheap. It came in this rather fetching little box. You could stuff millions of these into a back of a van and flog them to dumb councils uh, as super duper new LED streetlights. Now, the instructions say, Precautions. Please read this manual carefully before installation. Handle the product carefully during installation. The product must be grounded. Well, as usual, let's see if they've kept up their side of the deal. So here is the cable. You get a little stub. Technically speaking, you could put this onto a pole and then you could just basically make a connector and shove it down the inside. It's not going to be great, is it? But uh, I'm also wondering, this isn't really going to super fill up with water. It's going to drain out there. Hmm. But anyway, let's check for earth continuity. So I shall go from continuity from the earth wire to one of the screws on the case. Nothing. Okay, this is not a surprise for us. Here's another odd thing. The cable, usually the yellow is the middle, uh, conductor the earth. Uh, I can actually see the cable coming into here. Have they just stuffed it under the circuit board? No, they've just cropped it off flush. I don't know if you can see that in there, but they've just cropped it flush. We'll open this anyway. However, this is supposed to be the 24 watt version. Oh, is it? 24 LED, 25 watt. Let's plug it in. I've got my little Chinese tester here. I won't need to I put a little uh, indicator neon in here now. Is it visible? Maybe it needs to be better. Uh, but I don't need the earth because it isn't connected. So we'll stick that in there. Also, it's worth mentioning that just uh, relying on a pole stuck in the ground as an earth is not good enough, particularly if there's no RCD, which there never is in street lighting. Let's turn it on. That's not a good start. Let's uh, make sure I've got this wire in correctly and stuff it down a bit further. Now, there we go. It's a uh, medium cold white and it says 8.8 .8 watts. Is that going to fall as it heats up? It's wavering up and down. I think it's going to fall. Oh, tell you what, let's leave it for a while to let it heat up and we'll see what it goes down to. One moment, please. Some time later, the power has dropped to 7.6 watts, which isn't too bad. Uh, and holding the ungrounded case, it just feels body temperature. It's actually all right. It's not really grilling things. See the slight shimmer? That's because, as usual, the circuitry is just... Uh, the uh, rectified uh, AC supply with no smoothing. So I'm going to turn this off now and we'll open it up. Then I'll take a picture of the inside and show you. I mean, ultimately, we know what it's going to be like because it's based on that classic thing. Where is a suitable screwdriver? I may pause for this because uh, it's, it'll take a while to open it because it's got lots of screws. There's a screwdriver. I'm just grabbing a random screwdriver. This one will kind of fit. I uh, tell you what, I will pause while I do this because there are quite a lot of screws. I'll come back once I get to the last one. And here is the last screw. This would actually make a fairly decent workshop light if you just accepted it's not going to be that waterproof. Um, and uh, you make sure that you ground the case by putting maybe something onto one of these and making sure it's sanded at the back just so it is grounded, just as a safety feature. Um, is the circuit board glued in? It's kind of, it's glued in, but you know, it's not really, it's not like making a solid contact with that. Was that holding it in at all? I don't know if it was. I think it was just sitting in front of it. I don't think it was sandwiching it against the back. Anyway, I shall take a picture of this and we can reverse engineer. Incidentally, this is steel, so it's going to rust. And this is aluminum, so it's not going to rust, although that exciting connection point between those out in the rain would be an interesting scenario. Rightio, I shall take a picture of this and then we can take a look at the circuit. One moment, please. 
reverse engineering is complete, let's explore a couple of things. Look how ungenerous they were with the silicone. Yeah, they've got a couple of dimples here, but the dimples are huge compared to the actual indents in the circuit board they're designed to go into. It's a, a bit strange. Um, this bracket is for a 40 millimeter pipe, by the way, just so you know. Just in case you decide to use these in a workshop or something like that. Let's zoom down the circuit board. I shall zoom down quite a lot because uh, the bit we're interested in is here. Live and Nutricomin, two fusible resistors rated 10 ohms each. A metal oxide resistor. What happens when this gets to the end of its life and it starts getting very hot? Um, then we've got the bridge right far, a little load resistor, 1 meg ohm. And then we've got the uh, chip, which is an MLS... Uh, what is that? MLS 3535A, which is a generic pinout clone of the others, uh, with the 12 ohm sense resistor and a capacitor across the chip uh, just to protect it from peak current, I guess, little transients. Then all the LEDs are just wired and each uh, in series and each uh, LED contains three chips. Let me show you the schematic. Anything else worth mentioning that? Not really. Let's just go straight to the schematic then. The schematic looks like this. I'll zoom in just a tiny bit more. Here's the AC supply coming in here. There's the 10 ohm fusible resistors, one in each leg, possibly just because sometimes these panels do fail to the case, which is unfortunate given that it's not grounded. See how they just cut the earth wire off here. Uh, we've got the metal oxide resistor across the connections after that. So presumably when it passes enough current, it'll smoke these resistors. Mm, that'd be quite a lot. There's a bridge rectifier. There's a little one meg ohm load resistor to stop after glowed through capacitive coupling between uh, switch wires. Um, and then the positive goes through all the LEDs. There's 24 three chip LEDs giving 72 LED chips at three volts each gives 216 volts. This is kind of designed for 220 volt ish supply. And the rest is dropped across the MLS 3535A, which is a pin clone of the EG1000, one of the classic chips. There's the little capacitor, 10 nanofarad, just to actually decouple trans current spike transients just to protect the transistor in here. And then we've got a current sent resistor, um, which I guess does the current, all the LED current flow through that. I think it does. Uh, and when it reaches usually about 0.6 volts across that, I think, uh, depending on the chip. Um, it will actually start regulating the current back. So this resistor sets that current. And if it gets too hot, uh, this chip itself will start overriding that resistor and it will start reducing the current just to keep itself in a safe operating area. But that is it. An interesting, very stereotypical little light with the oddity that they've basically gone the full hog and supplied it with a little pole mounting bracket and called it a street light. It does make me wonder if in some areas of China... They do actually use these as street lights or yard lights or whatever. But um, it's very low power. It's less than 10 watts. It's going to be fairly efficient in that sense. It does the little lenses, which uh, I don't think they're really lenses as such. I think they're more LED covers than lenses. It's got the look of the lens, but it's just a LED cover. So it's just going to be a splash of light. But that's it. It's neat enough. It's cheap. It's novel, it needs grounded, but is usable as a workshop light.